Quite a sporting day right now. We have the Tour de France is starting and also the World Cup quarterfinals are going. England is beating Sweden at this moment, but uh, more germane to this channel as I am brewing a batch of Hefeweizen and a couple years ago, three years ago, I tried to make a more banana forward one. There is a video on this. I did not get the, the banana to the degree that I was hoping for, which probably made it a more balanced beer, but this year I'm going to try a couple other things to maybe make it a little bit more banana, such as not aerating, other than just getting the word in there, not making a starter, fermenting it a little bit warm, and also uh, quasi open fermentation. So, I'm using Imperial Yeast German Ale Stefan G01. This is the Wine Hen Stefan Yeast. It's the same as many other yeast manufacturers make. I have a low alpha acid uh, US Pearl 3.9% will be the bittering and only hop. The grains are five pounds Wireman pale wheat, five pounds raw Turo, and then a half a pound of rice hulls I threw in after the mash. So hopefully the gravity will be around 1050. And like I said, I'll definitely get a shot of however I end up trying to ferment this. But for now, I have to finish collecting the wort and get it boiling. So after this foam settles, it'll be in the mid 1040s, maybe mid to upper 1040s. And I also got five gallons. My marker is right there. So now I'm going to pitch the yeast. I didn't aerate other than splashing it or just pouring it through the funnel and strainer. So I'm just going to pitch the yeast and I'm going to keep a cover on it. This cover for, well, until it is actively fermenting. And then I plan to uh, kind of sanitize this cloth bag and bungee cord it over the top and let it go like that. I pitched the yeast at about noon and it's just shy of eight o'clock. So, no starter, no additional aeration, and this thing is ripping pretty good. So I think the goal of under pitching to get more banana, you probably would have to actually, um, you probably would actually have to not pitch a whole Imperial yeast pack, honestly. So it has a little bit of a croisin, so what I'm going to do is I've sanitized this bag, grain bag, I'm gonna rig this thing up here and I suppose I can get a shot of that. All right, so this is what I got. It's well bungeed all around. It's over the, the top. It's sanitized in case the uh, croissant would get that high, but I don't know if it wouldn't with um, less pressure. I don't know, I've never done this. Um, but yeah, there'll be like such a level of CO2 kind of in here that there won't be a problem of anything getting kind of down into the beer. And as long as I have it covered, there's not going to be insects or anything like that. So we will uh, give it a shot. So I checked on this this morning. It's about 20 hours after pitching the yeast, and actually it was upstairs, I just brought it downstairs because I think it's a little too warm, even for trying to ferment it warm. But the croissant is all the way up to the top, and it's actually kind of a little bit of gooeyness is right here. But I don't think it's going to, you know, overpressurize. It's able to definitely vent off the gas, and the, the gunk is just going to kind of be there. I suppose I could take the thing off and remove some of it and actually maybe I'll sanitize a spoon and do that just for fun 
but it is ripping and the other sort of thing is I wanted to ferment it warmer what I'm seeing is it used to be 74 76 but now I don't even hardly see a temperature indicator so I wonder if it just creeped over 78 so I brought it down to this cooler room where hopefully it'll come back down a little bit and we'll just see what happens since I did the video a couple hours ago things have changed uh, the as you see the shirt is wet so it had just sort of been going up into the you know hitting this this is the underside now I'm kind of wondering if this doesn't look too brown I know when you're top cropping if you want to harvest some yeast there's some brown yucky stuff that I've at least seen in a video where you skim off and then the next day or so it gets to be a creamier cleaner looking thing now maybe around the inside of here is some of the bad stuff but this actually looks about like I think I've seen it when it's harvested so I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize a, a jar or two different sizes I'm gonna try scooping some of this out I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and maybe I'll put it back on at, you know at this point it's not up to the top anymore so I don't know if that's done being up to the top but I'm gonna take a look at this so I've been doing this for a few scoops not really sure it's mostly just foam here I'm not really sure if this is I'm sure this would be better and easier if I had a would have done it in a in a bucket uh, which you know I didn't do but uh, yeah I mean there's like all kinds of this foam and I guess what I'm imagining is once it settles ooh, she smell yeasty so I'm just gonna fill up you know this kind of jar and maybe a, a smaller one and then we'll Get this somehow maybe covered with the cloth again and see what happens. This is what I ended up with. I hope maybe it's the right thing. We'll see how it changes in time. It looks like even at the bottom already there's some settling. This is what we got going on in here. It's still got a croissant. It's still bubbling. Doing its thing. I'm going to... I've cleaned this bag, I'm going to get it all sanitized, and I think I'll just recover it, just because we got insects running around here, and so on, and, you know, let's keep it a little bit covered. I don't know if, how that affects the open fermentation element, because there's really no pressure holding it down, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this looks like in a, in a day or so. So the plot thickens. This is eight to ten hours after I collected the stuff. The one on the left did also have this separation like this, but I just swirled it up just to see how uh, stuck it would be on the bottom. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this into this and collect it that way. And I'll make a note that this is the first one of doing this, and then I think I'm going to do it again right now, because to be honest, I think this beer is going to be done fermenting pretty soon, and I don't want to miss my chance. So I'm going to pour this into the jar on the right, get this cleaned out, sanitized, fill it up again, and possibly once that drops down, maybe I'll do it another time. But I'm just experimenting and get some yeast this way and see if I can use it in another batch. This beer has now come down in temperature, so I do think it might have been over 78 because it was in my upstairs, which was probably 75, 76, and then I was actively fermenting, and then I had shirts over it. So it will be interesting to see if anything comes of that. But when I opened it up right now and stuck my nose in there, I was getting a lot of banana. Which is what I'm going for, so hopefully the warmer temp won't have taxed the yeast and maybe I'll just get a result that I was looking for. It really does look pretty cool though. And this also looks a lot like what I've seen when people top crop yeast, so I'm going to go ahead and try it again. 
So as I am skimming this, I'm getting right down to the beer. So there's not that much of a croissant, which makes me think it is probably getting done. I suppose I, maybe I will take a gravity reading. I wasn't planning on it, but maybe I will anyway. I think I just brewed this yesterday. Yeah, I did. I just brewed this yesterday. So maybe I will take a quick gravity reading. This beer is basically down to about 10.10, 10, 10, 10 11, and it's been 31 hours after pitching. That's amazing. I had one beer do like the whole from, it was like done fermenting in 24 hours from pitching and that's basically what's going on here. Super yeasty of course. I think it does have some sweet banana character. But there's a lot of yeast in there and some of that will drop out. I mean, that's amazing. You could almost, you know, keg this up. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put this on here, get a bung and a stopper and a stopper and an airlock in there. And so, yeah, because it's not actively fermenting anymore. It may just be finishing up. I got a little bit more top crop harvest that... Maybe I'll just add into that other jar and I'll see if I want to use that to make another beer or not. But it was kind of interesting. It would be easier in a bucket, but this thing worked okay. So this beer is off to a fast start, that's for sure. And I think it's going okay so far. Oh yeah. Seeing George Clinton in about three days, so rocking some Parliament. Uh, Kegan the half of Ison. Turn this down for a sec. It's down to 1010. It's one week from brew day. It's uh, looking like this. So there you go. And it is uh, throwing me a little banana. Definitely in the aroma, also in the flavor. Also like a little bit of a tartness that I think you can kind of get on these beers sometimes. Or maybe just kind of a yeast bite right now. It's only a week old. It's already gotten, of course, a lot clearer even though you're not trying to get it to be a clear beer. But it's looking pretty good. So we'll carb it up and give it a taste. How do you get doll? <laughs> we are in Chip's garage. Hello! She's manning the camera. We are tasting the half of ice and banana attempt number two. Oh, I forgot the other thing that I did with this beer that we were talking before. So I did several things this time to try to get a little bit more banana flavor. I did not aerate other than just pouring it into the fermenter. I did not make a starter. I fermented it warm. The other thing is I did a quasi open fermentation, which will be in this video because I did some footage. So I have a big mouth bubbler. You guys don't know this, but I did a, just a cloth over it, bungee cord. Sure. So less pressure, I guess. Yep. And I actually had to, it was pretty much done fermenting. The next like 30 some hours later it was down to like 10, 12 or something. So I kind of eventually was sealed it up and put a airlock on there. It went from 1047 down to 1010. This beer is two weeks old. It fermented a week. I kegged it, and now it's been in the keg a week. For my money, this is the most banana y one that I've ever made. Now we have charcoal smoke blowing in. Yep. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, the other thing, as you saw in the video, it probably did get up to 80 degrees at least because my thermometer goes up to 78. And it was off the thermometer, and then when I cooled it down, then I could, oh, now it's 76. Off so, I mean, it, it was off the chizarts. And uh, <laughs> I am very happy with it. It's uh, not a lot of clove. If you were uh, putting percentages, it's 85, 90% banana, and it kind of overpowers any clove that's there. Yeah. What do you guys think about, um, I mean, 
a guy might like a more balanced Hefeweizen, or he might like this. I mean, what do you guys think of this beer? What do you think of Hefeweizen in general? Uh, for me, it's not one of my favorite styles personally, but I think in large part because of that clove character. Okay. So for me, I find this to be a much more approachable example of the style. Okay. Because it doesn't have the biting, kind of lingering, mm -hmm. clovey character that I don't particularly like in the style. So I think it's good. It's a light, refreshing beer, a uh, decent mm -hmm. body. It's. Yeah. I, I think when you talk about the cloviness too, it makes me think of sometimes it gets a little smoky even. Hmm. And that's, but this, not even close to that, it's way no, out of the other side. It's really nice. It's like the canned ham with a little cloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you um, were, you had a nice dessert. Oh, I said, example. yeah, I smelled it, and the first thing I, I thought of was banana cream pie. And then I was like, I th thought about it some more, and I'm like, no, it's not the fluffy top part. It's just the middle, a little bit of that, and then you break off a piece of crust and eat that, and that's that's what this is. So it has so like a bready, bread has a bready, banana, creamy thing going yeah. on. Nice light, um, light malt character to it. If there is some clove in there, it's it's pretty subtle. And it has a little bit of the tartness that you get from the Hefeweizen yeast, which is this, you know, again with Imperial yeast, I think they're knocking it out of the park. It's the Stefan yeast. I believe I just it'll be in the video, but I believe I just opened the pouch and pitched it. I'm pretty sure that's what I did, and it was tearing through it, you know, quickly. And uh, so it's the Vine Hunt Stefan uh, original strain, which you can buy from other yeast manufacturers. And um, yeah, so in this situation, and in this uh, case, I believe, I guess for my money, I would kind of speculate that warmer t fermentation temperatures it maybe is a key to getting that banana flavor. That's what I've always heard. I don't think I've ever fermented anything at 80. I don't think. I'm sure you all have. I have. What about the <laughs> Kavik? Yeah, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of that. Push some semi-open. That, and whatever. Uh, what about the semi -open? that uh, it's hard to say if that was a factor. So. I'm actually using this yeast again right now, but it's going to be a closed fermentation, and it's going to be a little cooler. Mm -hmm. And I don't want the banana in this Rogan beer I'm making, so I'm going to try to keep it into the lower mid to lower 70s, and I'll see if I get you know, some banana off that or not as much, but but this worked. I think I don't wouldn't think I'd want much more banana character um, than this. But I think it's pretty drinkable and yeah, I'm happy with it. Very nice. It is real nice. So yeah, if you want a banana half of ice and give it a try, report back and thanks for watching. Catch you later.